The doctor walked in and looked at my mom and dad and said, I'm sorry, it doesn't look like he's gonna make it. You better start making arrangements. And I'll never forget the first time that I saw him in St. Albans Naval Hospital in Queens, New York. If it hadn't been for my mom and dad in the room with him, I never would have known it was him. And all these thoughts are going through my head now. I remember I was standing right next to my brother as he was lying down, and I'm wondering if this is gonna be the last time that I'm gonna see him, and something very strange is happening. Because he's supposed to be unconscious, and I notice that he's lifting his arm, and he clenched his fist, and then he raised his middle finger, and, <laughs> and he was waving it back and forth. And right then and there, I knew he wasn't going to give up. First, they said he wouldn't live long. Well, they're wrong because he's alive today. Then they said that he would have to eat certain foods. You want to know what my brother's attitude was? Don't you ever tell me what I'm going to eat. Typical New York attitude. Don't you ever tell me what I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat a bowl of pasta and a couple of meatballs every day, even if I have to shit on the toilet while I'm eating it. 21 feet of his small intestine were either blown out on the battlefield or taken out on the operating table, and parts of his other internal organs were damaged as well. What my brother experienced falls nothing short of miraculous. He is the only man, as far as they know, in medical history that ever survived that kind of wound. He's in medical journals as someone who beat the odds. So my brother never said, why me? He said, this is me. This is what happened to me. What do I have to do to turn this around? My brother was in the hospital for seven months. When he got out, he said he was going to go to college and we didn't think he'd do it. He was 95 pounds, but he did go to college. He graduated with degrees in history, administration. He went back to the same school that he graduated from and he became a history teacher. Then he became an attendance officer. Then he became an assistant principal. Then he was principal. Then when he wanted to retire, they said, no, we won't let you. And they made him superintendent of the entire school system. And you say, how did he do it? How did he enjoy himself in that condition? By focusing on what was working rather than fixating on what isn't working. By blessing the things that life has given him rather than cursing what life has taken from him. Sometimes in life, what is a miracle? Nothing but a shift in perception. But then if you allow yourself a shift in the way that you're thinking, even a slight shift of optimism, that impossibility suddenly becomes very possible. It's not what happens to you that determines how successful and how happy you're going to be. It's what you do about what happens. It's the choices you make. It's the thoughts that you have about the challenge that will formulate the belief and the attitude that you have that makes the difference. And whenever you're confronted with a challenge or a problem, regardless of the severity, it's never a matter of managing the situation. It's a matter of managing your mind.